family, community, churches, government, school, workplaces. Organizations are at the heart of human experience. They keep us safe, they procure us food, shelter, water, and provide a source of esteem and a sense of belonging, all the requirements for life. Organizations are so pervasive, it can become difficult to step back far enough to see what's happening within them. Gareth Morgan uses metaphors as one way to look deeply into the functioning of organizations, but warns that with each metaphor, we create a certain way of seeing the world. Each metaphor holds the power to illuminate certain aspects while concealing others. Arguably, the most pervasive organizational metaphor of our time is the mechanistic view and can be illuminated by the image of the common cog. It is difficult to imagine an organization that does not strive to run like clockwork, that does not hope to increase efficiency, that does not expect a certain level of predictability, that is not subordinated to a calculable bottom line. But what does the mechanistic metaphor illuminate and what does it conceal? A pile of cogs in itself is not very useful. In order to have a functioning machine, we must develop a relationship between the various cogs in the system. Relationships develop when we begin to provide points of resistance or rigidity. With its development largely in service of the Industrial Revolution, the typical mechanistic system chooses to fix points such as time, with individuals performing tasks based on a strict adherence to the clock. Task, with individuals performing specialized labor, often with restricted movement, and knowledge, deterring individual cogs from thinking beyond their station by limiting information. These are just a few examples of controls that may be set into the system in order to achieve the desired output. Without these fixed points, nothing would happen. The fascinating aspect of organizational systems is the way both individuals and society are influenced by the interaction. When the mechanistic system comes into contact with social values, we can see how the prescribed code impacts principles. Suddenly, compassion becomes subject to time. Justice may be subordinated to a measure of outcomes. Leadership can be controlled by knowledge, and perhaps integrity is dependent on the task at hand. This may be evident in the way others treat us within our workplaces, but more often we hear it play out in our own self-talk. We fear alienation from the system if we attempt to promote rigidity in the aspects of our society that exist beyond the values of commerce. With a set of utilitarian values as a guide, it is easy to dismiss the mechanistic system as inhumane. But what if we were to fix human values into the driving force of the system? Is it possible to use the mechanistic metaphor if it is hinged on a values-based system, or is this beyond its adaptability? As it stands, when something that is not cog-like enters the system, we are in a situation of misfit. The mechanistic metaphor has no contingency to accept the existence of the non-cog. There are only two options for the misfit, transform into a cog or be rejected by the system. Finally, the most glaring omission from the mechanistic metaphor is reference to both the input and the output that drive the system. We can produce lattes, or furniture, or weapons of mass destruction with equal efficiency. Even more startling is the image of a hungry machine eating up anything in its path, from the natural world, to human values, to humans themselves. The mechanistic form of organization has been integral to the development of the modern world, but thankfully, we can see the need for more subtle metaphors in order to include the most important aspects of human existence in our organization.